We're starting off today's video with something a little bit strange. This thing pretty much says these are items that you should never buy and not own, but you can get it for 100 yen. And it also specifically says not to use on your blogs or anything like Twitter or YouTube. So um, that's exactly what we're gonna do. <laughs> What, what did we just get? I hope this is PG. What? Hang on, gotta pull the tape off. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> they completely ripped me off. It was a lie. It was a lie. It was a marketing scheme the whole time. Does anyone want these? Want this? I'll ship it to you. I'll ship this to one of my Patreons, I'm sure they'll love it. I feel gypped. <laughs> I was expecting something super sus. That's why it says Such never to buy it. tactic. <laughs> Damn it, they got me so bad. <laughs> Watermelon apron, anyone? I could see myself wearing this and preparing dinner for me. <laughs> it, gets, it gets better. This one's a swan one. Uh, it, I don't know. And then there's a pineapple one. Is there anything else weird? Llama one, cat one, oh gosh. Okay. You need a crab one. YouTube's not gonna know what to do with my uh, content from this video. It's gonna be so confused. So welcome to today's video. Uh, it's actually a public holiday, which is why May's with me. Um, but we kind of had to do a bit of running around and try and see if we could get some stuff at the local like home center place. Unfortunately, it was a huge bust. Um, but now we're gonna head home, eat lunch, and then uh, I've got a bunch of editing to do of all the previous videos to get them all lined up. And that's because I just kind of figured out well, yesterday I booked my flights. I'm going to Australia. Um, I'm gonna be there from uh, the 13th all the way through to the 22nd. Gonna be driving with Adam LZ and Luke Fink at Archerfield Drift Park. I'll be there on the 17th on the Sunday and I'll also be driving there on the Tuesday and the Thursday after that. Um, so if any of you guys are in the area and you know where Archerfield Drift Park is, please come by and say hi. All the event information is on their Facebook page, Archerfield Drift Park. I'm really excited, um, the 34 as well, we've got some big plans for that. We're trying to pull some strings to get everything in time to build that thing up to 400 horsepower for the event, as well as getting some knuckles sorted out and stuff. Um, it's it's kind of crazy and I'm not 100% sure, like we're relying on a lot of different people to come through for this. So I don't wanna say 100% that that's gonna definitely happen, um, but the 34 will be driving and we will be using it, whether it's 400 horsepower and it doesn't have knuckles, I don't know yet. We'll figure that all out as uh, the time frame comes along because once I land and I get to Brisbane Wednesday night it's literally like two days before before everything has to be finished so we have to smash a bunch of stuff out anyways um, I think that's enough talking let's jump back into the vlog I just finished editing and uploading today's video and it's so cool to see you guys reacting to it already on discord and just talking about it in the general chat but I think my favorite thing about our Discord community is just like, you know, seeing people sharing their builds with one another and getting advice and stuff like that. It's it's so encouraging. And this is this is exactly what like I wanted to do. I wanted to create an environment and a place to better the, the car community essentially. And it's so good to see that happening, not only with my YouTube channel, but also with like the community that we've got here on Discord. So if you haven't joined the Discord, definitely join the Discord. I'll put a link in the description. As well, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know from the live stream, I've started a Patreon and if you guys want to support me and what I'm doing here with this big step of doing YouTube full time, please head over to Patreon and sign up for one of the tiers. We set up some pretty cool tiers with like Nissan stuff and things. I think you guys will get a really good kick out of it. Um, but um, yeah, um, I do apologize if you guys do find it a bit frustrating that I'm gonna be like kind of reminding and pushing Patreon a little bit in my videos now. And that is purely just because now that I'm making the step and the move of doing this full time, I need to give myself two months to work out if this is viable and if I can stay afloat. So uh, right now, the best way for me to do that is uh, you know to have Patreon and have a lot of you guys supporting me that way, um, as well as just keep putting out content every day in hopes that the algorithm on YouTube rewards me. Um, but if you can't sign up for Patreon, that's totally okay. I understand that there's a lot of people here that probably aren't even old enough to own a credit card or can't even afford that kind of thing, especially if you've got your own car builds going on. Um, I, I don't wanna take a cup of ramen away from you because I know you spend all your money on car parts. But um, 
yeah, for those of you, if you want to know what to do to support the channel, uh, all you need to do is pretty much like a video, comment on the video, and share it on your social media is the best thing as well. Tell as many people in person as well about your about the videos and the channel and things like that. And that just gets more traction, more people interested in the channel, more people watching it and things like that. Anyways, enough talking. I've got something downstairs I want to show you guys. So I've been holding on to this guy for a very long time. Um, and this product is actually something we stock at a Taki garage in Australia. And it's essentially, it's, it's one of these purple emergency lights that you can plug into your cigarette lighter. It's actually the same brand and the same quality that all the undercover cop cars and stuff use here in Japan. It's pretty much, it's a genuine pat light, if you know anything about this. There you go. Pat light. Oh, focus. Oh my gosh. Come on. There you go. Yeah, so genuine pat light, and it's just really cool. I think on the camera, let's try and get it out of the box. There we go. Try not break anything. Why do I always insist on trying to do these things one-handed? I feel like it just, it's painful for you guys to watch. So anyways, they're just pretty much a cool, like, cool factor kind of thing that you throw in your car that when you go drifting at night, it looks super baller and cool. So I figured I'd show you guys how to install one and how cool it looks. And then I can give you guys a link if you want to purchase one. Uh, we ship these worldwide as well from Australia. So if you do want one, they're pretty cool. And JDM, you got like Japanese warning labels and stuff like that on them. They also come with a spare bulb inside there that you can see in case the one that's in there blows, but they're just a standard bulb that you can buy from any auto parts store. They got a really nice long cable with the cigarette lighter port, but you can just easily cut that off and wire it into a switch if you want on your drift car. And with the magnets on here, this thing can stick onto your car up to speeds of over 160 kilometers an hour. So you can stick it on top of the car or you can just go and stick it like on the back parcel shelf somewhere where there's some metal and it will not go anywhere. So let's go install it. Okay, so installing one of these bad boys is uh, really simple. First things first, I guess, is you need to work out where you want to put it. Um, typically, a lot of Japanese people and like the Bosozoku, all those kind of guys, they stick it all the way in the back here. So that's where I'm going to put mine. Put it right there in the middle. Looks great. And we just got to make sure that the cable isn't tangled up, which I probably should have laid this out a little bit nicer before. But I think it'll be okay. And then, you plug it in and it looks like that oh man that's cool I got myself some Bosozoku street cred now so you can kind of tell why this looks so cool it's just a rotating purple light uh, typically here in Japan this is actually used as like a you know you're pulled over on the side of the road something's wrong you're changing a, a flat tire so that's what they, they were typically used for um, but then as culture kind of progressed and people wanted to uh, what's the word kind of show that they're badasses all around I guess and just kind of uh, rebel against uh, authority Bosozoku guys and stuff were throwing them in the back of their like you know their Showa uh, era cars making it look super cool and kind of like just pissing off the cops and everything but anyways it's a cool thing to have obviously I would never drive around the street like this but it's still a cool thing to have like when you're parked up with your mates and stuff and just have for photos and videos and stuff like that just look at that. Looks so cool. All right, so there you guys go. If you want a little bit of extra JDM street points and uh, some rebellion kind of Bosozoku style stuff, definitely get yourself one of these for your track car and have a bit of fun. Uh, or for shows and you know car park meets and things like that it just makes your car look awesome at night with the light kind of reflecting and going everywhere I do have to add though I got this mixed up with the the uh, higher grade model one the police ones which are blue and red which has the magnets on the bottom because this was designed as just uh, the purple ones were just meant for people to put in their cars when they got a flat tire on the side of the highway they would just sit them on the back parcel shelf back there so there's no need for a magnet so uh, these do not stick to the outside of your car um, but then again that kind of goes against the the place where these were put traditionally for like the whole you know nostalgic Japanese thing but anyways it's a pretty cool thing unplug that for now because we don't want to drive around with that and we're gonna go ahead to get some more kerosene for our heaters but more importantly we're gonna go for a 7-eleven coffee run so let's find out what today's coffee of choice is just finished getting 
kerosene for the heaters at home. If you didn't know here in Japan, you get all your kerosene and stuff just from the gas station. So you just put the canisters like in your boot, you go to the gas station and they fill it up for you just like they fill up your car for you and clean your car and everything. The service here in Japan is unbelievable. Anyways, uh, 7-Eleven's right there, so we're gonna go get a coffee. Unfortunately, there's not a huge choice of uh, canned coffee at this 7-Eleven. But we're gonna try the white Georgia 7-Eleven branded. The Cafe Al Light. Light? Light? I don't know how to pronounce that. Someone tell me. Here we go, the moment you've been waiting for. Oh man, this stuff tastes so good. So if you're here in Japan this winter, definitely try one of these bad boys out because these are my favorite. Especially the fact that it's a 7-Eleven and uh, Georgia kind of like teamed up themed coffee. It's a pretty cool can. I'd like to see someone uh, grab one of these and put it on their dash like an Australian Estates with a gauge in it. It looked kind of cool. Anyways, I'm gonna enjoy my coffee and then we're gonna head home. So this is what I was talking about. Um, it's pretty much like a little jerry can full of kerosene and it's a special clear type, like non-odorous kind of version of it. And uh, depending on what type of heater you have, we use a heater just down in the living room and this is enough for like two weeks worth of heating for us. So it's much cheaper than running like electricity with our normal air conditioning system. So we just opted for this. And we find that the kerosene heaters, they have the ability to heat up the room a lot faster than like your normal split system aircon. So that's what we do. I'm gonna uh, put this, oh, stuff it, stupid plastic bag. And uh, I'm gonna go put this now around the side in our special kerosene box. Okay, so we are all stocked up on kerosene now. And the main reason why I had to go out and do that was I didn't want to leave May with like running out of kerosene essentially for the heaters while I'm away in Australia. I'm away for just over one week, so I thought it would be better to just make sure we were filled across the board with that. Although I'm sure because I'm not here, the heating's probably not gonna get used hardly as much. Um, Cause she has work every weekday, unlike me. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, actually this is something I can show you. This is, the, this is the kerosene heater I was telling you guys about this thing, this thing here. It's um, it's not that large, it's not that crazy. It's just got a little like gas burner thing in there with the fan and just pushes it out. And all it uses is this kind of canister here. And uh, I think it's probably like five liters or so fits in this one canister. So you only have to fill it up like once a week. And those things out there are like 18 liters. So yeah, like two and a half weeks or two, two three weeks before we even have to go to the gas station and get more kerosene, it's great really. Anyways, enough talk about weird heaters and kerosene and stuff. I'm sure you guys are kind of like, oh, that's a bit weird. But anyways, thanks heaps for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't uh, like the most craziest and awesomest video with turbo bolt-ons and crazy builds and drifting, but I'm sure you still enjoyed it anyways with a little inside of Japan and things like that. And uh, now that I'm doing daily videos, you're gonna get a lot more of like kind of daily what's going on because I'm not at the track every day and I'm not building a car every day, although, when I fly to Australia, we're gonna be pretty much getting the 34 up to 400 horsepower before the drift event in three days. Whole bunch of stuff's happened. I just got confirmation from Mumba that they've sent the new turbo. Things are coming into place and if we can pull it off, plus an angle kit for the 34, I don't even know how that happened. How was my 34 getting an angle kit before my Skyline uh, here in Japan? I have no idea. But the angle kit for my 33 here in Japan is actually probably finished. Denny from SDF just hasn't called me yet to tell me he's got time to fit it. So once he calls me, then it's going there and getting that angle kit installed. So don't, don't uh, stress about that. Probably by the time I come back, he'll be sweet to book me in and we can go and do that as well. So both of my Skylines will have angle kits. Anyways, enough chit chat, I'm ranting again. Thanks heaps for watching guys. Make sure you like, comment, share and subscribe. Patreon, buy a sticker, um, check out the Discord, all of that jazz, you know what I'm talking about. And I'll catch you on the next video. Once again, thanks for your support. I really appreciate it. It's a very scary step that I'm taking, but I know with all of you, we can do it. Peace out guys. Okay. <laughs>